I'm joined now with 76ers outsider Crystal Rich. Welcome back to Philly Sports Talk presented by Comcast Business. I'm Crystal Rich. What we don't know if Nick Foles will continue to have the hot hand against the Texans. We'll have much more on Jimmy Butler's future later in the show. Hello and welcome to Sportsnet Central presented by Sloan Toyota. I'm Crystal Rich. We'll have more on everything you need to know about who's going where in the NBA. But we start with the Phillies who must find a way to figure out the Miami Marlins. Plain and simple, the Phillies enter Saturday's matchup with the Marlins as the only team in the division without a winning record against them. They are shooting 10% better than we are, and that brings up my second point, which is defense. You cannot allow a team to have six players score in double digits. Yep. 31 points in their first matchup, yep. only 10 in the second. Yeah, and you know, a big part of that only 10 points is that he hardly got to the line. Crystal, Jimmy Butler says he only cares about winning. Let's just for fun, does he make the playoffs next year? Well, that was determined, Amy, that that was a lie. No, <laughs> Jimmy Butler will not make the playoffs. And guess what? If I have to eat my words, and he is going to have a first round exit. It's going to take at least one or two years for Jimmy Butler, who wants to be the guy so badly, to get a the team to be built around him to be good enough to compete in the East. The East is getting better by the second. The Mori Povich reference is the tremendous, most tremendous thing ever. And You're I just welcome. want to applaud you. You're the real MVP right now. You are very <laughs> That's impressive. The question is, how does the defense view Markel Fultz? Because if they don't really get on him one-on-one, -on -one, if they take a step back, that means there's going to be more defenders in the post, which is not going to be a good look for Embiid. We know that he is excellent when the defense is not set. But when you play teams like Toronto, who are very fast in transition, that is another way to limit him. I'm trying to be optimistic, but mm -hmm. also realistic. Yeah. In the sense that they they need a scorer off that bench, just one more piece. And I think that's what the fan base needs to just be content and to woosah and mm -hmm. to relax. So you lost J.J. Redick, who is a prolific three-point shooter. Everyone says it all the time. But you also gained a little bit by losing him, too. You gained some defense, and guess what? The DHOs that worked so perfectly, they also did something that the fan base did not like. It brought Embiid to the perimeter. Mm -hmm. And now we will see if Embiid truly does not like to shoot the three, because right now he can live in that paint for as long mm -hmm. as he wants to. If he's shooting threes, that's because he lied and he actually <laughs> likes to shoot threes. <laughs> so that. We need a shooter, but since we lost J.J. Redick, it's a sad loss, but you have to think. He's 35 years old is he going to have the same season as he had last season the year before and although he had a great statistical season 2018 2019 he also had the biggest slump of his career last season did we see the Doug Peterson of old this is a guy who went for so many fourth down conversions the Eagles opening drive fourth and two Foles goes for it what does that end up in a 37 yard touchdown for Darren Sproles in the second quarter Zach Ertz gets that one yard touchdown but before that fourth and third we went for it went to Goddard and we converted and then we had the two-point conversion which didn't go yeah. our way but it's still a gutsy call third quarter fourth and one Nick Foles quarterback sneak are we seeing the Doug Peterson of perhaps, let's just say, 2017? Well, if you look at last year, Jimmy averaged 22.2 points per game, and that's exactly what we need. We need shooting. And my biggest takeaway from this is the price that we paid for it. When you go all the way back, Tom Thibodeau paid a hefty price just to get Jimmy Butler. He gave away two guards, Chris Dunn, Zach Levine, for a guy who only played one full season and helped them end their 13-season playoff drought. So the asking price initially was very big. Biggest thing, though, is when he being double teamed. I think teams are starting to figure that out because when he's double teamed, who is he really kicking the ball out to to trust if it's not JJ on the perimeter shooting? He had a terrible game tonight. After a terrible game, then he wants to come at the fans. Let's just think about this. He ended the game on nine field goal attempts in the entire game. But most of the game, it looked like five and six until a little bit later in the fourth quarter. We talked about this before. Your point guard cannot go out there and shoot the ball five, six times. It's not going to cut it. And let's think about this, Tyrone. This is not Toronto. No. This is not Milwaukee. No. This is not the Celtics. This is the Brooklyn Nets. Since Jimmy Butler opted to go to Miami, one of the biggest questions in the city is who will be the closer for the Sixers? While we don't have the absolute answer, what we do know is that Tobias Harris will have a bigger role on the Sixers. He alluded to that by saying, you'll see more of the ball in my hands. So if Carson Wentz mm -hmm. is fully healthy, and if Nick Foles beats the Redskins, 
if we make the playoffs, you're giving me a, a major side eye right now. What do we do? What, do <laughs> what, what, does, what does Doug Peterson do? It's only one thing to do. Keep the hot hand? You gotta play the hot hand. Fans were really disappointed in Ben Simmons against Toronto when he only had six field goal attempts the entire game. And then you rewind to early November when he last played the Pistons and he had four field goal attempts, nine total points, only made two shots and had five from the line. How much are we expecting from Ben Simmons this game with Embiid out? This is gold right here. I'm going to tell you why. This is a man who is mad that he did not get elected Rookie of the Year. Yep. He wanted to eat tonight. He got. That's why he took 35 shot attempts, and that's why he did not pass the ball. What's up? We are patiently waiting, Amy, and no longer can we run it back, but we can at least run it right there. Yeah. We can run it. run it. So with yeah. J.J. Reddick obviously at the drop of 6 p.m., the news came out. For him to get $26.5 million at 35 years old, good for him, but I also have to throw some shade because defensively, we already know he was a little bit of a liability. We also saw without Joel Embiid how he couldn't really create for himself. He really needed the DHOs and dribble handoffs, so people are both up and down about this in Philadelphia. I was hoping that Mike Halloween costume would help him play better, but it didn't. And for two straight games, Mike Muscala did more than Dario did with less minutes. 12 points in 16 minutes opposed to 8 points and 31. Yeah. And then the same thing with the Hawks the night before. 14 in 18 minutes opposed to 4 points in 26 minutes. So it's not all of that, but he does get a lot of the heat. That goes down for me in my book to Tobias Harris. Against the Warriors before the trade deadline, he averaged over 25 points and grabbed eight boards before becoming a 76er. He already had a tremendous game late against OKC with a clutch eight-point run. So if he does that and players like Jonah Bolden, who will be in and be spot, has really good games. Last time against the Warriors in just 14 minutes, eight points, two blocks, two steals. This was a game for the players who usually don't get a lot of playing time, like Cork Moss, like TJ, to really show off. And I really expected that from Fultz tonight, for him to show off. Yes, Brett Brown has made it very clear that he wants him to concentrate on defense, but when is it going to be time for him to finish offensively? The game last night, I, I just thought no one expected it. No one thought except that. For, oh, except for Chris. Except well, yeah. for my receipts. Except receive. for, for, for Chris the ball. Chris the drop. Chris the drop. Chris the drop. With Nick Foles in there looking very confident, we got the ball to someone else besides Zach Ertz. Mm -hmm. I feel like everyone in the league now knows that Zach Ertz is the dude that everyone wants to go to, at least Carson Wentz on the Eagles. We got Alshon Jeffrey, who came up with about a 160 yards. 54 yards in that one 75-yard play that resulted in the Adams mm -hmm. touchdown, a 50-yard reception that led to a Smallwood touchdown. That connection was beautiful, and I think it's something that teams did not expect. If anyone, even with Carson Wentz out, they expected Earth to still be that guy, yeah. and it wasn't. He really started to do some different things. Mm -hmm. He tried to have Jimmy at the one. He put him at the point. Why? Because he wants these pick and rolls, and he wants his isos. Not only did he fulfill a need, we've been saying that we need a four. We feel like we're only one player away. He got not just a four, but a tremendous stretch four. A guy who averages 20.9 points per game and shoots 43% from behind the arc. He has now, other problems. But he had other problems. And we're Actually, let's get into it right now. Let's get into it right now. Right now, Tobias, if you just look at his stat line, it's a pretty decent stat line. 21 points, 6 of 14, 2 of 5 from deep after that little slump from behind the arc. He had 7 boards, 2 assists. Looks like a decent stat line. But guess what? We found a little bit of a flaw, and that is in the paint. Have you ever noticed that when Tobias Harris is driving in, it is hard for him to finish in the paint, a.k.a. a layup, when it is contested? I just want to see him be a little stronger in the post and put that ball back up there. Tobias, four points in 40 minutes. Let that sink in. Four points. Now, with Tobias Harris, I am now confused. Because going into the regular season when he first got here, we were very excited about the stretch four that he was. He gets behind the arc. He can make shots. He always shoots about 42.9%. As the season goes on, you know, it's a roller coaster. He fluctuates. But towards the end of the season, it seemed like he was slumping pretty darn hard, especially from deep. But I still gave him credit. I said at least he will get to the line. At least he'll step up and make a mid-range jumper. The one flaw in this game is he really does not finish strong in the post, try to lay it up and just... It gets knocked away. He can't finish strong there. But I've always stuck up for him. And I even went as far as to say, if he 
was in the East, he would have been an all-star. Because in the West, he's just not an all-star because he's in the West. Now he's in the East. This is when it counts, and I don't know who he is anymore. He came in off of a bye week, so he had some time yep. to learn the playbook. But his first snap as an Eagle, his first game as an Eagle, he's really doing a lot of returns. But then you look at our rivals over at Dallas and Amari Cooper, they were using him how he should have been used as a deep threat. Yep. Does that trouble you at all? Is it like that we just don't know how to use him? It was such a good sign, and he did it with so much swag. I mean, the opening game in 2019 here at home at the Wells Fargo Center opens the game with a fade array jumper that was pretty and it wasn't the only one all game he took at least three in this game he didn't make all of them but what it does and why we've been crying for him to take jumpers is so we can open things up offensively for the rest of the team